You guys have all probably heard about this thing called CSS art. Basically, it's when people do illustrations with nothing but HTML and CSS. There is a lot of examples online, like this person made Mona Lisa with a single div and a huge CSS rule. If you look closer, it looks like a box shadow for every 5x5 pixel square. It's kinda cool, but not exactly what we're looking for. Another example would be this funniest ever animation of Pickle Rick. This is a bit more interesting. The HTML has a structure and there is a separate element for each shape. Here is another one. It's a bit simpler but follows the same rules. This picture consists of several divs positioned and styled in a way so it looks like a cute koala. There is actually tons of posts and tutorials on how to make these. But I thought, what if there is a way to teach a computer to do this automatically? What I mean is to make an algorithm that looks at a picture as a set of pixels and finds the best way to make it with pure HTML and CSS. And what do you do if you need to make an algorithm but you have no idea how? Let's try it, you use machine learning. In this case, I used the thing called genetic algorithm. If you've never heard of this, here's how it's gonna work. First, we make a random set of HTML and CSS documents. Let's call them paintings. This set will be our first generation. For each individual in the generation, we calculate how good it is. In our case, the closer the painting to the original image, the better it is. Based on these scores, we select the best paintings of the generation. Then we create the next generation by making mutations of these paintings. A mutation is a copy of a painting, but slightly changed. And then we repeat the process over and over again until we're satisfied or it's stuck. All this could be a bit confusing if you never heard about genetic algorithms before, but it will become cleaner as soon as you see it in action. So let's try to make it work. First, I tried to turn an HTML and CSS painting into a set of parameters. I decided to start with the least complicated scenario. Let's say that the painting is a plain structure of divs with different styles. I also limited the available CSS properties to these ones. That way I could represent paintings as lists of elements, and elements as sets of numbers. The goal of our algorithm would be to select these parameters to make the painting that looks as close to the original image as possible. I also made a small React application as a place to do experiments. Here's how the parameters actually work. As you can see, I could only make paintings of colored rectangles. But it was already powerful enough to make happy little trees. Next, I needed to make a fitness function. A fitness function is the function that evaluates population individuals in genetic algorithms so that we can select the best individuals of each generation. The most obvious way was to just find the sum of differences of individual pixels between the original image and the painting. But in order to do that, I needed to find a way to actually turn a painting that is an HTML document into an array of pixels. It turned out there is no easy way to render an HTML element in JavaScript. That could be for security reasons, I honestly don't know. But there is a couple of workarounds. I needed this to work within a browser, so I couldn't use headless browsers or anything like that. I also didn't want to use external APIs. So my first option was a technology called WebRTC. With this you can capture the browser's screen, get a single frame and extract the data we need from there. But I didn't really like it, because you need to ask a user for permissions, you need to put an element on the page and actually show it, and I'm not really sure if there is a way to get the full page, not just the visible area. So I kinda skipped it right away. Then there was two very similar libraries, HTML to Canvas and DOM to Image. I tried using them, but I ran into limitations again. For some reason you need elements to be attached to the DOM for it to work, and you also need them to be visible. And with all that, the rendering was quite slow. As I was getting a bit desperate, I found another solution. And here is how it goes. First, you create a canvas element and get its 2D context. Then, every time you need to render an HTML string, you construct an SVG with it as a foreign element. Put it into a blob to then read as a data URL. Create an image with this data URL as a source, and then draw it to the context. And finally, you can extract the image data from the context. I'm gonna upload the code to GitHub and put the link into the description if you're interested. Just keep in mind that this solution doesn't work with external styles and stuff, and it probably does not support some of the CSS properties. 
but for me it wasn't needed. By the way, a quick tip for those who are not 100% comfortable with promises and the sync await. Let's say you need to write a function that creates a new HTML image element with a data URL as a source. Sounds pretty easy, so you create a new image, set the source, return it and call it a day. But here is the catch. Even if, like in our case, you set the source to something local, loading the data into the image is asynchronous, so there is no guarantee that the data is loaded when you return from the function. To make sure of it, we need to set an event handler to the load event. But then what? One way to solve this is to make our function accept the callback parameter as well. But that is so 2010, it would be way nicer to make our function a sync, but how? Get your hoodies ready, guys. We're gonna do something only the coolest hackers know. We're gonna make our own promise. So a promise constructor accepts a function that has two parameters, resolve and reject, which are also functions. We're not gonna care about reject here, because error handling is for the weak. And we're calling the resolve function when the image is loaded. Now we can call our new function like this. And that's it. Now you're ready for a job interview at Google. Let's go back to our project now. I made another page to test the renderer. Here you can generate a random painting and render it to a canvas. As you can see, the painting is a set of divs, whereas the result of a render is a single canvas. I also made a way to test performance. On my machine, a thousand renders of 200 by 200 pixels took around half a second. It was way far from perfect, but maybe enough for what I was doing. Our next stop is mutations. I wrote a simple version of a mutation function. All it does is that every property of a painting has a 10% chance to be slightly changed. I use the random number generator with a normal distribution, so that small changes are more likely than big ones. And I limited the values, so that our rectangles don't go outside the painting, and the color values are between 0 and 255. Here is how it looks. Every time I press the button, a new mutation is generated. It's finally time to try and do the training. Here is a very simple algorithm that I used. First, we generate a thousand random paintings. Then, for each painting, we calculate its score. Remember that the score is how close the painting is to the image that we try to draw. With the scores, we select the top 100 of the paintings. Then, we mutate each painting. For every painting we do 8 mutations, that would make a new set of 900 paintings. And we also generate 100 more random ones. That can help in case the process gets stuck. Now we have a new 1000 paintings. Call it the next generation and go back to step 2. And repeat this as many times as needed. Let's try a simple case. The original image is gonna be just two rectangles. Let's see if it works. At the bottom you can see the best paintings of the current population. By the way, I optimized rendering a little bit, now we can render up to 100 paintings at once. Alright, looks like our thing is working. And here is another one. This one looks worse. Our algorithm chose the wrong order of the elements at the beginning and it can't change it. I guess we should add Z index to the list of our CSS properties. The next step was to try actual images as originals. I picked one of the classical paintings completely at random. Let's see if the algorithm works. Oh wow, it found a pretty good solution very fast. You can also see the code of the best painting at the bottom. Then it was time for a harder challenge. I increased the number of rectangles to 10 and tried to run it on this beautiful picture. It didn't work at all. So I did some improvements. I added new CSS properties, increased population number, added penalties for painting that are too similar to each other so we don't get stuck on a single point. Let's see if it's any better now. By the way, the training is really slow right now, so I sped up the video for you. It looked better than before, 
but still far from perfect. Also at some point I noticed that sometimes different branches learn different features, but there was no way for them to share that information. It was a good reason to introduce some sort of a crossover. The crossover mechanism was very simple. Basically I took all elements from the top paintings and then randomly constructed new paintings from them. I also tuned some other parameters as well. Let's try again. This is great. I don't know about you, but I consider this a win for now. But there is still a lot to improve here. I think the main problem right now is speed. If you guys know how to render HTML faster or a good way to do fast math in a browser, please let me know in the comments. The project is on GitHub, the link is in the description. At the moment of recording the code quality is horrible, but I'm planning on cleaning it up a bit later. And that's it for now. Thanks for watching guys.